Hi, my name is Mark Dillon. I'm one of the co-founders of Viola and the Chief Operating Officer. So speaking of Chief Operating Officer, uh, I would like to know that how did this change happen? You were the, you were the uh, CEO at some point, then you were the um, head of software, and now you're Chief Operating Officer. So but how did it affect you and uh, how, how, how different it is from your previous posi positions? You know, a small company can be very dynamic and you need, you need different things from different people at different times. So I was the original architect for the ways of working in the company, got everything up and running, and helped to push to get the product out as head of software. Once the product has been out, now I've stepped in. Back, it was actually my original role as chief operating officer of the company. So, so now I've stepped back into a role where I'm actually helping to make sure that the ways of working across the whole company, and especially with Selfish, are, are seamless and helping to enable us to keep in the market and keep the customer feedback going, keep the software updates going, and make sure that we have all of the right engagement points, like the sales and marketing and all of these kinds of things. Well, um, there are a lot of people uh, talking about the learning curve of Selfish OS, as you are aware of. Mm -hmm. So, um, people want to uh, try new things, but they are kind of afraid of getting used to it. So, uh, how, how, because Yola is not doing uh, that kind of big, big marketing like that costs millions of euros, uh, how are you going to feed this to the user that, no, we are not actually that, I mean, the device is not actually that hard to work with. It's just, it just takes a few minutes of uh, interacting with it. How, how, how well, is it going to be feed fed? One of the keys to scalability for a small company like us as operators and retailers and distributors and other kinds of partners. So of course point to sale is one very important thing here where when people can actually go in and they can try the device and, and learn some things about it. We've taken a lot of cues for how we do the uh, initial user. So when the user comes in for the first time, we've gotten a lot of feedback on the tutorial and how the things work and we're making sure that we give uh, a lot of little visual clues to the user to make sure that they can understand you know, so what some of the tricks are to be able to learn the device. But we do understand there's a learning curve there. We're taking feedback and we're responding to that all the time. Okay. Um, about the Android compatibility, uh, how are you dealing with malware? Because there's millions of malwares out there in Android applications and they're just there, you can't control them. So. Uh, you're talking about like security and everything, so how are you dealing with the malware at the moment? So, we haven't had any threats from this area yet, but um, of course it's something that we take very seriously. One of the things as well is that the Android is, is running basically in a separate virtual machine. So there are some connections there, but it's not nearly as open as it is with, with the Android operating system when you run an application and it has access to the full stack. We also will take some steps in this area. Oh, okay. Um, about your strategy outside Europe, uh, so you have officially announced that yes, you're going outside Europe and you're going to start from Russia, India, and China. <clears throat> how is uh, how is the strategy holding up? Because you know, people, for example, in India, I have seen a lot of feedback that the price is too high, and for example, in China, they're looking for bigger screens, they're looking for higher cores, or well, okay, Russia is okay, their developers, they're good, but the others are looking for other things that we are here uh, providing. So how is that holding up? Uh, there's been a tremendous amount of interest coming out of India, for example, as well, well yeah. though. So this is something that we're getting a lot of feedback that, that it, there is interest in the offering that we have at the moment. So working with partners, we can also do different price points for Selfish itself, but the Yola device seems to have a lot of traction in India. Okay. Um, how about the Chinese market? It was like from the beginning, well, half of your website was in Chinese, in, in Mandarin, and uh, everything was, I mean, even the EU customers were worried that they're going to get it the second, I mean, after the Chinese market. But suddenly, it, the, whole, the whole thing changed, and <clears throat> first you launched in Finland and Europe, and then after what, three, four months, you are just planning to go to China. Well, of, of, of course, starting to sell at home was, was really important and really obvious for us. So, yeah. so we started at home, we moved to Europe, and then we're moving east now. So, uh, and the Chinese market is really dynamic. There's a lot of different things going on there, and there's a huge amount of choice for us even in what kind of partnerships that we create. So we're doing all the due diligence necessary to make sure that we make the right choices. Um, as you could see, there, there, were, there was a, a lot of our, uh, a lot of awareness and meetings for Yola in, in MWC and all of, most of them. And well, were you expecting that? I mean. Uh, where did that came from? 
everybody yeah. like started started to know you and got interested to you, and millions of business cards were uh, exchanged. So how do you see that? Do you see that as a as a positive? Is it gonna is it gonna get bigger, or it's just normal meetings? How, how do you see that? How, What's your perspective? You know, it's 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 amazing that just a couple of years ago we were three people here with with really no presence. Last year we had a couple of meeting rooms in the back, and, yes. and here we have this stand, and um, we've had uh, thousands of people through the booth so far. Um, we counted over 3,500 as of yesterday, and uh, you know, all of our schedules were full last year. Now we have nearly twice as many people, and all of our schedules are full. So, you know, it's. It's an overwhelming response that, that we've been getting here. And people are looking for change. They're looking for independence. They're looking for something that's different. And you know, this is a call that we've understood for a long time, and now the call's being answered. OK. Um, about being open source. So we are open source, right? Yes. We're also open for business. Exactly. But uh, there are still some parts that are, that are closed. Well, obviously, for, because, because YOLA is still a small company, you want to keep your own things that you created. You don't want them to get stolen by the others. So is it going to remain like that? Or are there any plans to make them open? Because I, I see you're slowly making some parts, like, for example, web browser yeah. open. So I, I would like to know if there are any plans for other parts, like fully open, so make it fully open source. You know, we're already one of the most open source platforms in the world, uh, if not the most open source. Um, yeah, there's a couple of basically UI components that the way that the UI is presented that we're hanging on to at the moment, just to make sure that somebody doesn't steal this thing and run away with it. But as we scale out and as the the, the call is there, then of course we open the the last few bits. But there's there's not very much at the moment that's closed. Yeah, that's true, actually. So, Plus, so we're working in open source all of the time. We don't do code drops. We actually work in the projects that support our device, and we put the enablers out there in the open. So it, it allows us to, to work with the community more closely. It also allows others that need enablers on the platform to be able to get those not only through the community, but work w with them in parallel and make sure that they're part of each software update we create. Okay, um, I, have, I have made a contest in the, in the community, and I've asked them, to ask you questions. So there were a lot of questions, I mean a lot of, actually it was one or two questions, but a lot of likes on it, about the security purposes. But you have announced that you're partnering up with F-Secure, the Finnish company, it's awesome, but nothing else is announced. Okay, United is announced as well, yes, that's cool. But um, how how secure are you gonna get? Uh, we know that you're not, you're not providing anything to the NSA, NSA or any other, manufacturer, any other company, anything, but... Yeah, the NSA is not our backup solution. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, uh, how, how secure are we going to get? It's, it's a matter of, uh, you know, developers are just thinking that the security is absolutely zero at the moment, mm -hmm. now. So, how is it going to go up? It's, it's, uh, it's something that's, that's at our core, it's very important, and we're taking steps as we go along to make it more and more secure. But openness is one of the keys to security as well. So we have full visibility to you know a tremendous amount of our middleware and and, and the, the whole open source stack. So this is one of the things that helps a lot. But of course this is something that we're doing a step at a time and I think that the one major step forward is this secure cloud-based solution with F-Secure and United. Yeah. So can you please mention one more time that you have no back doors? <laughs> We do not have any deals with the NSA. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, so um, there's one, actually, this, this one I asked you before, but uh, it wasn't recorded on this. So what do you think about the community, especially Yola, Yola Pioneer fans? <laughs> I love Yola Pioneer fans. Yeah. So this is the world's greatest community. And if it was not for you, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be doing this. So you know, we do this for you as well. Actually, this question was from the founder of your account. Anyway, um, devs, okay, everything is free, right? Even the, even the Selfish OS is free. But devs are, the developers are actually looking for a way to make money. And, well, at the moment there's no possibility, but there will be, right? Oh, there's a huge possibility. So, at the, as the application ecosystem is evolving, one of the things that's happening right now is you need to be able to look at existing business, look at ex ex existing commerce, and understand how to connect people to those. So there is a tremendous opportunity to provide partnerships, even as an application developer, where you can help others to connect with existing services. And there's, of course, a financial uh, advantage there. So 
the way that we're giving sailfish away for free is that it's free for general use, but as soon as somebody wants to make business on top of it, then we make a cooperative partnership. So it's another thing that developers can look at and consider as well, that you know, putting an application into a store, it's practically like winning the lottery today in order to be able to, to get noticed and actually do something with it. So what is happening now is there's an evolution that is taking all of the existing kinds of business and even new innovative kinds of business, connecting users with it, and then being part of that channel, which then allows you a tremendous business opportunity. So basically you're, you're giving the selfish OS away for free just to attract the developers and the business business partners. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, there's a lot of reasons as well. We, we want to share what we've created with the world and we want to enable other users to come and, and have the benefits of Sailfish. So this is also a key thing that by giving it away on other Android devices and, and allowing some community participation there, then we allow others to, to get the benefits from Sailfish. And even like if a low cost handset manufacturer wants to do something without customizing the UI, then it gives them a great alternative. And then of course user base is really key these days. So you know the more users that we get for Sailfish, then the better it becomes. Exactly. So the last but not least, um, how was the experience for you? How, how has it been at, at MWC? It's it's really an overwhelming situation that you know, we've had such an outpouring of, of support. We're getting great feedback on the stand. Like I said, more than three and a half thousand people so far that are here. It's been really busy all day. You know, we've had some of our great community members like you who've actually even pitched in to help because it's been it's been so busy. And you know, we we've been running full stop here, and it's it's a really rewarding experience to be able to validate the things we've been talking about for the last few years. So people are getting it, the businesses are getting it, the other customers are getting it, and you know, it's it's a wonderful experience to be here this week. So thank you very much. If you have any message for the community that we are all involved in, you are involved in, so please say to the camera. So, right so, so thanks, James, and really want to personally thank everyone out there who has given your, your support and love to us. And it's something that this is why we get up and we do this every day. So you know, thank you very much.